Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, it's Greg here again with a kit review for one of my Christmas kits. As you can see it's the amusing hobby Super Conqueror with all the external armour being placed on it. Uh, this was a Christmas present from my good friend Joe, Joe Bentley from Joe's Model Kits. Superb kit, been after this for a while and uh, it was a nice surprise to get it on Christmas Day. So thank you very much Joe, it really is much appreciated. Top gen. So you can see the artwork is quite nice and as you can see it says limited edition because you get the uh, a resin figure with it as well so it's obviously 135 scale and some amusing hobbies and on the other side we have kit number which is 35A013 obviously 135 and yeah, that says mark one with spaced armour so it's on the side the other side is the same on this side we have some, they look like pictures, so they must have been like a mock-up of one. It must have been, because they look like pictures to me. And there's the resin figure. And on the other side, we have a, a sort of a CAD drawing of, or CAD picture of actual uh, fil built model with no, obviously not uh, no paintwork or anything, but look at the size of the barrel. Bloody hell. Bit of information, the usual sort of uh, workable tracks it's saying. Quality molded. Say quality molded. I can't believe you that. Yeah, quality molded in multicolours. Suspension design to fit diorama as well. So a few little extra bits and pieces in there. So that's without further ado. Let's just move my telephone out the way. Let's uh, crack open the box. I say I, I didn't quite show you it quickly, but I say I'm, the sprues are all still in their bags and everything. So. Way. As you can see there's quite a bit of plastic in there. So we'll do what we normally do. If I can. Let me just move things totally unorganised as normal. But uh, that wouldn't be me otherwise, would it? So let's just see. That's better. Right. Let's just switch the camera back around this way. And we'll start with the first screw. Right, and the uh, sealed bag, so we'll need the knife again, unorganised. So I'll just have to move the uh, we'll whip it the way for now. Uh, there we go. I'm on my. That'll be uh, coming up short of the whip it. As I say, as you seen, you may have seen there with the, got the first coat of green on it. So. This is the first screw, and it looks like there's, uh, there's the the, uh, the two screws are the same, and we have the uh, sprocket and the return uh, idle wheel, and straight away you can tell the detail is really really nice. So there's no flash. Uh, it says FV214 Conqueror. This is sprue C. So we have two of these sprues. Let me just move this there so we can see the bit better. So the sprocket there and the return roller, a uh, sorry turn wheel, little bits and pieces again, so that is the shovel, looks like the side of a uh, external case or, or, or external box I should say. Don't know what them other parts it could be suspension. Not too sure what they are. But you can see by the moulding they really are nice moulding, really crisp. And no stupid injection marks where they shouldn't be. They're all on the reverse where they should be. Is there any on that one? There isn't any on that one either. There isn't anything on the back. So, oh yes there is on top of the uh, back of that one there. The circle one there. But you're not going to see them so not to worry about them. Yes yeah, so there's two of those. There's two of those screws. Which mini art would do this? Individual packets instead of one big mass packet that you have to sight the rifle through. Uh, then again, we have I think it looks like a bit of a spaced armor and a few bits and pieces again to show what the air part could be the exhaust. There's the pry bar, I'm not sure if this is part of the gun or not. And I say this is says the same thing, it's a sprue D and it says FV2 again, 214 Conqueror. Obviously the other Conqueror which is available as well without the spaced armour. So most of this will probably be the same 
apart from the space armor, or I thought all of it is apart from the space armor. There again, the detail is nice, and you can see by the catch, it's got a nice um, cast number on there as well. Let's just zoom into it. There we are, there's the cast number. And you can see there's a texture on there as well, which is nice. Well, I think it probably that's part of the space time, I'm unsure, but it's, no, I don't think it is, but it might be. There's, there's like conduits for the electrical by the looks of things on there, which is nice. There again, nice details, nicely moulded, clean, fresh. Nothing else, no ugly injection marks where you can see them, and certainly no flash at the moment. Oh, as I say, there's one screw of those like that, and then there's one bag here. With, I think this is more than likely for the running gear, all the wheels and the bogies and the suspension arms and things like that. We've got a few couple of loose ones in there, so we'll put, be careful when we put them back. Are these all the same? Yeah, they are. These are all the same. Yep, same thing. This is sprue B. And the wheels, considering the size of the vehicle, are very small, aren't they? But nicely detailed again. And then we have some, I think they're return rollers at the top. A little bits and pieces, and the starting of the bogies. And the suspension. There's the, the springs. For the bogies. There's the cable, uh, for the tow cable. Yeah, for the tow cable. Not too sure what them bits are, probably to do the suspension. Yeah, but looking at it, as I say, nicely moulded again. Certainly no flash on this piece either. On the reverse, as obviously you've got pin marks on the reverse, but you're not going to see these things. The wheels are job put together, so you're never going to see inside there. So yes, again, another winner, another winner with a sprue. So we'll move that out of the way. In fact, I'll put this bag back in here, seeing as there's a few loose ones, so we don't. Uh, Lose them as such. There's not worse than go halfway through the kit and then find ah oh shit, I've got no piece for that. Unless you're a good scratch builder, which I'm not. Right, so we'll have a look at the tub first, the whole the uh, sorry the um low tub. It's, it's pretty plain, but there again you've got all sorts to put onto it, a bit of detail on the bottom, not a great amount. Nice sturdy plastic, I don't think it's warped by well, looking at that, it looks very straight. Yep. See, it's, it's a fairly large vehicle as you can see. When you see the uh there's a slight bit of texture underneath there as well. So yeah, nice enough. Nice enough for the tub. And then we have the upper hole, which is vast, and I mean vast. Look at the size of this thing. Yeah, you know, I've got reasonably big hands, but you know it's about the same length as my hand. Maybe, you know, if I put my hand to the actual bottom, it's actually bigger than my hand. But see, the detail is really, really, really crisp and nice. There's the electrical stuff for presumably for the uh, headlights, moulded on. Little hinges on the uh, muck guards on the front. Lots and lots of things for this stuff, for the armour to go uh, for the boxes to go along the side, and on the reverse. There's all these heavy hatch covers for the engine. I've seen that on uh, the Chieftain when he lifted all these up. And there's some they're heavy as hell by looking at them. There's a petrol cap there, or fuel cut, or oil, or whatever. So there's two of them there. So we know where the fuel goes. And again, the detail is nice, even though it's all molded out of plastic. The actual engine grills look really nice. Really, really nice. There again, look at the. Nice detail, nice bolt details on that again on the air. Uh, more cards on the back. Yeah, so it's 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 going to be a, a rather large tank when it's built. Right, another sprue. Well, I think there's just the one in here. Yep, there is just the one. And this looks like side skirts and rear. Yeah, we've got side skirts, transmission for the uh, final drive there. Nicely detailed again, then we have the side skirts. 
which aren't massive but they're big enough you know they don't go right down nice detail on those that's for the sponson I would have thought I'm not too sure if that's that looks like the uh, rear of the tank I'm not sure or could that be the rear we shall find out when we get to the destructions but there's a nice bit of detail on that could be a firewall I suppose there's a few little bits and pieces again which is not which are nicely molded nice detail nothing wrong with that and clearly marked you can actually clearly see the numbers and some kids you struggle to see the actual uh, number there again very nice very nice indeed right, this is the last really big screw of plastic and it's a two piece barrel but it's slide molded so it shouldn't be a problem getting it out of the uh, seam line out of it as you can see the size of the turret wow and they've got lovely lovely texture on that turret you can see the texture that's going to be superb it really is let me just move that light a bit there is that any better see the cast texture on there there's all the little wires again all the conduits for the electrical stuff it's on the top as well is the uh, cast texture, a big plate there with the uh, bolt details and there's the turret ring the teeth don't know what that part, I think with the bustle at the back I think that's probably what that is and then we have like hatches part of the gun breech, uh, you know for the front let's, let's move it around let's move it around yeah, it looks fairly simple probably that's just for the gun that shows the uh, cast texture as well on that and then we have hatches, movable hatches again with the teeth in again for the zoom at a commander's hatch at the top. Nice bit of detail again with the cast texture on it and the cast number. And then we have the barrel which is two piece, slide molded. I don't know if they're hollow all the way through, yep they are. That one is anyhow. They're both hollow all the way through. And then we have the 30 cal which which is fairly decent, fairly decent, nothing wrong with that. We'll work with that. Go on, focus in. There we go. It's too small, I don't think we've got enough small drill to go through them holes to bring the holes out. We shall see. There's a hatch. All your drivers and uh, bow gunner. If there's a bow gunner, it won't be a bow gunner on there, ready operator or loader or whatever. I see the cast texture on that muscle as well. So top draw, top stuff, really really nice, really nice. Right, so we've got the figure, which is, uh, we'll take you out the back and just show you the main torso of the figure. Hopefully it resembles something like what's on the front. Everything comes out apart from the, what I want out. Let's see, very straightforward build. Yeah, detail looks nice. Let's just bring this back a little bit. Yeah, the detail looks nice. Very straightforward assembly. Nice folds on the jackets and things on his trousers. And the figure face looks really quite nice as well. Not much clean up on there. There's a little bit of clean up to do, but. Just under his chin. Oh, it's gone. It's just a bit of uh, the arms and the legs. And he's actually got a little cigarette in his hand as well. He says on the front picture, so he's actually got to be careful with that. He's actually got a. Let me just see if you can see that. Yeah, a little cigarette in his hand. So I have to be careful with that when I'm uh, putting no meal. <coughs> I'll knock it off. So let's just pop these back in that bag. Got goggles as well, just want to see them. There's some little goggles as well to go on in which I didn't really see them come out the back, but they seem to be for the figure. Right, and then we have brass wire for the tow cables, which is always nice because it, it keeps its shape and you can mold it. Not quite taking that out the back. And we have some springs, proper springs. So I'm wondering if obviously you've got the options of uh, a static model and the suspension which it tells you is working. So this, I'll probably go with this. 
springs are actually in there. So I'll make it workable suspension, which is uh, decent enough for a size tank that is. And then we have a large sprue of PE, which contains some of the spaced armour and other bits and pieces. I won't take it out of the bag. Let's bring this back again. It's still not right. I like it. It's quite thin as well. Does it say it's made by? Yeah, I'm using Hobby made it as well, so it's their own. You can see that I'm using Hobby 2017, so it's a relatively new kit. Not new, new, but relatively new. So there's a bit of PE to work with on there as well. And then last but not least, plastic is the tracks, which are... So I'll just stick a little hole in the bag and we'll take a couple out. And we'll see. I'm just going to check see if there's any uh, pin marks and things like that. We'll just take one out. So it's only connected onto uh, only two, two connection points. And the detail looks really, really nice and no injection marks none whatsoever it's still a bit dark aren't we on that for some strange reason the detail on that is really nice really really nice hopefully they go together nicely as well and there's no there's no pin marks on the reverse so hopefully they shall fly together with a bit of luck what we get to there when we get to the uh, instructions. Right, and then we have a small sheet of decals, which I won't take out the bag. There's no point in taking out the bag. You can probably just see there's numbers and there's the Desert Rat, uh, a couple of other companies. I'm not too sure who, but a few numbers as well. If you can re see them, the white numbers as well. I'm sure Mr. Bentley will let me know what unit markings they are. So they're fairly nice as well. I say they're probably made by themselves as well. Yeah, they are indeed. Right, and then finally we have the the destructions, which is in a nice booklet form. It's matte paper, but nice. It's got the same picture on the front of the box. It's uh, on here. Let me just move this. No, I'll leave it where it's at for now. Move out the way here. Yeah. The usual stuff, it's going Chinese, Japanese, Korean, whatever it is. Uh, they've got the uh, assembly guide icons on there as well, on the front as usual. And then we have the sprue map, first page, which is nice to see. It's on the back page when it's not bloody good to anybody. Can never understand why they put them on the back page. So, and then generally start off with uh, your lower tub by assembling parts of the suspension and then we got the option either putting the plastic one in or making the spring one I'll go for the spring one I think and obviously we're assembling the wheels and the wheel caps and they go onto the hubs which I probably won't put the wheels onto the hubs I'm oh, sorry onto the um, the bogies at that point but uh, we shall see And then again, more of the assembly, putting the bogies actually onto the, uh, onto the, let me bring this right back over here now, so there's a bit of light on here as well now. And this over here. There we go. And assembling the bogies and the wheels on there. Probably, probably will put the bogies on, but that's as far as I'll go. Um, sprockets are going to be made up, uh, depending on how they fit. If they're a loose fit or a fit that I can pop them off and on, I'll put them on. If not, they'll be made up and sprayed. Well, they'll be sprayed uh, separately. And there again, we're starting again with uh, what looks like the reverse, which I thought it was the rear of a tank. Yeah, and it's got the angled adjustments or something on the uh, for the tension of the track for the uh, return roller. There, to give me sort of some sort of. Mark and see an angle. 
angle or angle adjustable. So that's good, we can adjust the tension on the trap, which is a real nice feature. And obviously there we have the complete hull at the bottom with all the um, uh, wheels on. And then we have the, uh, what looks like a side skirt being put on at that point. Hmm, strange. The brackets there, but I won't be doing that. I want that be separate again. Spray it separately. And then we have more. I think that's the rear of the tank, or to be sure. Again. And then we're starting with the tracks. And it says. 98 links for each side and they just click in. No glue required, so hopefully it'll just click. We shall see when I get around to building it. So there's 98 of them, and luckily there's only two, there's only two uh, points to, uh, to take off. And hopefully they'll click in and stay in. And we shall soon see when we get around to building it. And then we start on the upper hole. We start on the upper hole now. Which is... You know, there's a bit of space to armor and that, and then hatch covers and hatches and vision blocks and one thing and another. And onto the rear engine deck, other bits and pieces on the side there. Yeah, an exploded blue of that, whatever it is, built up and then put onto there. So it's a uh, it's nice deep. I do like the uh, instructions. They're not overly overly complicated and there's not too many things going on in one section which I do like it's easier to read as well and then we have the light guards is the light guards give you again it's give you a yeah light guards I think they are and the wing mirrors which I won't put on that point because I can guarantee they'll be off within five minutes so they won't be going on at that point and then we start with the pioneer tools again that'll be all separate I never put them on paint the tank and then we start a bit of electrical stuff at the front of it by shows you what the C8 is, it's really quite clear. And there isn't a light, so it'd be some kind of is it for the lights? I can't see it really. And then it's telling you 125 millimeters for the brass wire. Are you talk cable? Well again I won't be putting that at that point here. There's a lot of stuff I won't be putting on by the looks of it. But now we will be starting to build a few external external boxes and gases on the outside, some other little bits and pieces. Obviously, um, build up there, and then where the placement goes for them when you've done the sub builds on the sides. Fairly straightforward again. And so carry on with the buckle uh, hole again, adding more storage boxes again on the other side. Uh, looks like the exhausts, is it? I'm not too sure what they are. Yeah, they're exhausts then. Yeah, of course they are. And that looks like the top of the hull done. Because on the next part we're starting on the, uh, the turret, which is nice. I've got some small pieces to go on the inside. A vision block. I'll have to wait and see if I can uh, mask I'll probably mask that off when it's in. I have to get some of that uh, liquid mask, I think. Don't possess any more stuff on the inside of the turret. And then the turret ring and the bustle goes on the back. And then we start with a couple of hatches. A few little bits and bobs on the outside. Obviously the hardest work is the lower hull and the running gear by looking at this. And then we're more of assembly for the outside again. For the turret we have the smoke grenades there built subsection again and then blessed where they're placed on both sides. Get a few small details. And it's telling you something I don't know yet until I get to it. Ah, it gives you the option of having the door open or closed. That's what it is. So we'll we'll decide that when we get to it. I would think I'll probably have it closed because I don't think there's no internal stuff, is there? So I don't think you're going to be looking into a, a black void unless I can do something. And then we're putting that mantle part on the front and <coughs> caps on the inside, and then the two piece barrel with a uh, 
end piece again so it's, it's fairly straightforward cleanup but that's going to look quite nice no point in buying a metal battle for that I'm sure it'll be fine and then that's placed into the into the turret and then we start with a few of these hatches I've seen a smaller hatch vision blocks and other little bits and pieces again it's quite a lot into that little that little section there onto that uh, hatch, it's a movable hatch obviously and then you've got the uh, machine gun on there with the looks like little bullet tracks and the ammo box and then we're placing that onto a lower ring and then so we've got some 30, 30, 30. we start with some of the spaced armour which is on the front there not I see Presumably they're the four to edge parts, yeah. Again they're four to edge. Tell me super glue I would think. Some more little bits and pieces on there, presume that's all four to edge. And then the uh, finish thing is placed onto the front of the uh, hull. So I wouldn't say it's an overly complicated build. Oh, I don't think I'd recommend it for a, a beginner, more of an intermediate I would have thought, I should class myself as intermediate. Um, there's more of the uh, PE again, I'm going to slightly bend it the shape, a few more things stuck on it as well, all them little them parts of the PE must be bent at a certain angle to uh, the other turret, that goes on the side of the turret and then we have that main cover, that main hatch on the back with the, with the, with the machine going on. It looks a pretty awesome turret, doesn't it? It really does. Looks sleek and menacing. And then we put all three together, which is uh, a good point. So I don't have to connect this to the bottom of there at the moment. So there's no there's no problems there then. But doing uh, obviously the weathering and the putting the tracks on. So that's 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 good. And then the final part this is a gun crutch. On there, what we Englishmen call it. Or well, the travel lock, I think other people call it. I feel like being different though. And then unfortunately it's only a black and white, and it's only green, I can understand it's only green, but uh, even so it'd be nice to have a little colour 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 crawl out. Um, Obviously, you saw, oh, this is for the decals as well, for both decals and colouring. This just says dark green and Tamiya colours C17 XF61. Right to apply the decals. That's a bit disappointing, it was here. I thought it might have been a colour call out. I'll just check if I haven't missed anything. Possibly have. Nope, I haven't. That's the last page. And that's the last part. Yeah. Doesn't really tell you where to put the decals either. From my just cooling. Presume we'll just look at the box out, I presume. It's a bit disappointing, that's the only thing that's let down this kit. So there's actually just giving you the outline of the tank and saying dark green, and doesn't actually give you anywhere for the uh, for the decals to go. I know there won't be many on there. We'll just work on the box art. What a shame! If it'd been a nice kit and not getting that. But hey ho, can't have everything. So generally speaking, I think that's going to be a nice build, a, a big build by looking at the size of the bloody uh, the bloody thing. Um, be an interesting build. See, I've, I haven't got a lot of British armour. I've only built the Matilda. And the Cromwell. That's only two of built actually English tanks. So it'll be interesting to get that another one on the go eventually. We are built kits at the moment, it'll be next to the century. But generally speaking, I'm impressed with that kit. Thank you very much, Mr. Bentley. It really is much appreciated. So that's the end of this kit review. Uh, I'd like to say thank you very much for stopping by and uh, having a look. I'd like to say thank you to my subscribers, new and old. And I say, Hopefully today or tomorrow I'll have the next update for the, um, the Whippet. So this is Greg signing off. 
Have a nice day and we'll catch you again very soon.